All right, as we are saying, counting is still underway in India's Lok Sabha elections. It seems that the NDA is comfortably positioned at 295, so they are in poll position. They can form the government, but it will be an era of coalition politics, certainly. Uh, for the India bloc, they are at 230. Uh, now, just to remind our viewers, uh, in 2019, the NDA was 352, so they are down a significant number of 67 seats. In Varanasi, the Prime Minister has won a third time. However, the margin of victory has reduced to 152,000 uh, from 4,79,000 earlier in 2019. A special briefing was held at the Congress headquarters uh, by the party president Malik Arjun Kharge and senior leader Rahul Gandhi a short while ago where Rahul Gandhi said all decisions about whether to sit in the opposition or not will be taken tomorrow uh, at an India bloc meeting. Uh, he also was asked which seat he's going to keep, whether he'll keep the Vayanath seat in Kerala or the Rai Bareilly speed, uh, seat. And he said that decision also he has to take in consultation with his party and he has to decide uh, what to keep and what not. Also, of course, uh, the India bloc uh, charging ahead, uh, attacking the BJP-led government, saying this was an election fought on issues of unemployment, of the changes uh, that the BJP was going to bring in the constitution, issues of reservation, uh, unrest in the agrarian sector and so on. Uh, the Prime Minister has uh, also reached out to Chandrababu Naidu uh, and congratulated him for sweeping the mandate in Andhra Pradesh. TDP is an important ally of uh, the BJP in, uh, in the south. Uh, meanwhile, there was also speculation that the NCP uh, SCP chief Sharad Pawar had uh, reached out to the JDO chief Nitish Kumar but he has dismissed those uh, as rumours that would be important to reach out to the JDU because they are really an important partner for the NDA. Meanwhile top BJP leaders are also arriving at uh, the J at the party president JP Nadda's residence for a meeting as the vote counting inches towards a final tally. So lots of meetings underway and lots of celebrations underway as well in different parts of the country. Uh, you know, we saw uh, earlier images of Chandababu Naidu cutting a cake. There were also celebrations uh, in West Bengal for the Trinamool Congress and also celebrations here in New Delhi at the headquarters of the BJP as well as the Congress both celebrating. The Congress, of course, a major comeback, a reversal of their uh, prospects from the earlier two elections in the last decade. So certainly they have much to cheer about. Uh, but, uh, but as we said, that the NDA is still... Uh, you know, above the halfway mark of 272. So as of now, they retain power. Uh, questions will, however, emerge about uh, coalition politics. Uh, the BJP's own numbers are at the moment at um, 240, out of which it says 67 have been won, and in 173 it's leading. And for the India, for the Congress, I beg your pardon, they have won in 32 seats and are leading in 66. So that takes their tally to 98 at the moment uh, and joining us to talk a little bit more about what's happening in this election season today with the tallies now reaching a culmination we're now being joined by Jayant Krishna senior fellow center of for strategic and international studies mr. Krishna thanks very much for talking to us uh, today uh, your thoughts on this election yeah, so I think uh, the outcome has been quite unexpected, although the India Alliance has been uh, making such claims that they are coming to power. But, uh, you know, uh, the results today as they are getting declared, uh, you know, leads are available in all the parliamentary seats. And uh, clearly, you know, uh, the outcome here is, uh, you know, very different from what the exit polls had uh, forecast, uh, uh, you know, uh, yesterday and day before. So I think um, I, I think this is uh, this is an unexpected uh, 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 you know development, but the fact is uh, you know the India Alliance uh, it shows a few things that uh, there has been some degree of anti incumbency against uh, the Modi government, and uh, also India Alliance as an idea has uh, caught uh, on the fancy of uh, Indian electorate, and uh, it is an idea whose whose time had come and it has worked may not have worked fully so they have. Uh, uh, you know, fallen short of uh, the midway, midway, mid, mid, uh, midway mark, you know, which uh, NDA has, uh, you know, uh, reached that level and is beyond that around at around 290 seats. But surely, so it's uh, on, on quite unexpected, uh, but uh, but that's the way uh, life is, you know. Yeah. 
I mean, for 10 years, of course, we've seen, a, you know, clear mandate for one party. And this is going to be back to coalition era. How does that impact policy going forward? Of course, those are discussions for later. You know, there's still government formation to happen. There are a lot of back channel communications that will take place in the next, you know, week or so. So th these are still early days in that sense. Yeah, surely. So I think uh, uh, let's assume that uh, BJP being the single largest party and uh, NDA uh, having crossed the midway uh, mark at around 290 seats, uh, you know, uh, uh, so uh, let's assume that uh, Modi will be back as the prime minister. Uh, it will be NDA government, but this time uh, BJP will not have a majority of its own. So they'll be hugely dependent on, on their partners and especially two partners, which are uh, Chandrababu Naidu, uh, you know, who's the head of Telugu Desam party, uh, you know, in... in uh, uh, in Andhra and uh, Nitish Kumar uh, of uh, Bihar, uh, who, who heads the JDU. So I think there'll be huge dependence. So it uh, remains to be seen because if you look at these two parties have had a love-hate relationship, you know, sometimes they have been a part of uh, NDA, sometimes they've walked out of NDA. And uh, so I think, um, and, and Modi, uh, you know, uh, even his adversaries would agree that it, he's a very decisive leader, very assertive, uh, uh, aggressive in his own way. And and uh, gutsy, you know, he's the he's a he's a leader who who takes difficult decisions, uh, uh, you know, has the guts to take them. So I think uh, under collision dharma, it needs a very different protocol, a very different uh, attitude. So how uh, Mr. Modi would perform under a collision regime, the you know people need to uh, watch. But one thing is sure that you know some of some of the things that people uh, for which there is no consensus within the country i mean like uh, uniform civil code like uh, one nation uh, one election you know the kind of things which uh, with the uh, which bjp had been propagating i don't think uh, next 5 years that's going to see the light of the day even if you assume that a uh, uh, nda government would 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 be stable and last uh, for entire uh, 5 years so some of these contentious issues would not uh, see the light of the day but but the fact is that some of the reforms, you know, the, which the industry has been expecting, the business has been had been expecting, uh, the pace of reforms may slow down because uh, you know of a fractured uh, mandate and uh, uh, BJP not having uh, a majority of its own. But but you know, I I see India is a country of possibilities. If you look at Chandrababu Naidu, you know, he was the original chief minister. You know who was known for good governance and, and he's very very reform savvy person uh you know kind of a thing as a, as a standalone politician but how does he behave in a collision uh, that remains to be seen so i think uh, uh business has this apprehension that the pace of reforms would 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 get slowed down uh, uh because uh because of the, the collision dharma and 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 the you know the act of the balancing act which bjp will have to do vis-a-vis -vis its uh, NDA partners. Yeah, I just want to talk about, you know, that's an important point you're making that the space of the reforms always slows down when there are more decision makers. The markets today were extremely spooked uh, about what's happening. You know, they, they thought this is going to be char so par or at least what the exit polls had suggested, uh, crossing the 350 mark comfortably. So clearly, uh, that's a hint in itself. So I think, you know, Charso Par was more of a political posturing by uh, BJP. And uh, also, you know, I mean, like in the corporate sector, you set a target, you know, the target has a degree of stretch, uh, uh, you know, and 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 to excite and uh, people and the workers. So I think uh, even BJP uh, and NDA internally knew that they will not cross a 400 uh, uh, number, the magic, uh, but, but, but the fact is that what they have, uh, I mean, they have not even crossed 300. So, so I think market, uh, you, you all saw that, you know, uh, both uh, Bombay Stock Exchange and uh, uh, National Stock Exchange. You know, you, you had uh, jitters today. Uh, uh, you know, I, I would expect that after a new government is formed, likelihood is uh, to be led by uh, uh, NDA and uh, Prime Minister Modi. Uh, you know, so I, I, I would really feel that uh, people, uh, one thing small investors should avoid is they should not do any distress selling at all. Uh, wait for stabilization as the new government uh, gets formed. And, you know, I uh, I am no expert on stock market, but I also don't rule out, uh, you know, a correction happening sometime down the line. Uh, okay. So I think uh, it's a, uh, uh, you know, as I said earlier uh, uh, on your channel as well, that, uh, you know, stock mar markets are very, very impatient to react. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, when the exit poll results came, they were very, very quick to re react, uh, you know, uh, uh, both the uh, uh, indices had jumped uh, substantially. There was a rally in uh, major shares in lots of sectors. But today, when the results started pouring in within half an hour itself, you know, uh, the market uh, took a beating. So I would I would uh, 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 urge, uh, especially the small investors and uh, 
you know, they, they should not panic at all and they should wait for some stabilization okay. before they take any buying or selling decisions. Okay, Mr. Krishna, today the Congress held a press conference a short while ago where Rahul Gandhi was asked whether they are going to be happily sitting in opposition, to which he said a decision on it will be taken tomorrow at the India Bloc meeting. So do you think that they still think that they have a, you know, uh, you know, they, they have a chance of forming the government and that would certainly mean uh, they need to string together more parties. I mean, is, isn't that, is that unrealistic to think of at the moment? Yeah, so that's a good question. In politics, as they say, you know, there are no permanent foes, uh, you know, uh, and, and only your interest matters. And, 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 and Chandra Babu Naidu and Nitish Kumar both have uh, been a part uh, a part of a Congress-led alliance even uh, earlier. Uh, so I think, uh, and, and uh, I re remember Rahul Gandhi uh, has always been very, very respectful of uh, Chandra Babu Naidu as, as the original proponent of uh, good governance and, uh, you know, pro-development and, and uh, you know, traveling the extra mile to get investments in the undivided uh, Andhra Pradesh of which he was the chief minister. So I, I think you know, the two of them still have a good, good chemistry, good relationship. And Nitish Kumar has been on and off a part of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Congress and uh, RDJ, uh, 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 Rashtri Janata Dal uh, led uh, government in, in uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Bihar. So I think, uh, uh, I mean, nothing can be ruled out. I mean, it's, it's quite possible that if these numbers get added to uh, uh, India Alliance numbers and a couple of more parties supporting it, you know, they would also cross uh, uh, the magical number of uh, 272. So uh, there are all kinds of possibilities which exist. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, if, uh, if a Congress-led uh, government comes to power, of which the possibility looks uh, slender at this point of time, even that would be good for reforms. Because let us not forget, the most transformative reforms in last 76 years of independence, which India has seen, were the economic reforms of early 90s, uh, uh, in, you know, which were the government led by uh, uh, Narsimha Rao and the uh, reforms were led by Dr. Manmohan Singh as the then finance minister. So I, I would, uh, from a reform pers reform perspective, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I see uh, the pace being the similar, uh, uh, irrespective of who comes to power. And uh, it's anybody's guess that uh, who forms it. But, you know, the president of India is likely to invite the single largest party, which is BJP in this case, to the first uh, you know, uh, uh, the right of refusal would be theirs, but why would they refuse? Because yeah. uh, of obvious reasons, you know, they have with the NDA partners uh, a majority to prove. Uh, so I think it, uh, next next few couple of days are going to be very, very interesting uh, for political observers, uh, not only within the country, but uh, for uh, uh, political leaders and uh, business leaders all over the world. Yeah, political pundits certainly got it wrong as far as the exit polls are concerned. But, you know, the, but the Congress really fought this election, they said, on local issues of agrarian distress, on rural issues, on issues of unemployment, reservation, caste issues, you know, issues that weren't exactly national, but state-wise. Do you think that really struck a chord with, at least in states that they have, you know, positioned themselves as a, as a strong, uh, you know, opposition, or at least they've got more numbers than the BGP? Yeah, so I think one, one thing is clear that, you know, this time uh, national issues were few and far between. Largely election was, uh, uh, elections were run at the state level based on the local factors. And you're right, you know, unemployment and farmers distress, uh, you know, farmers committing suicide, uh, their income uh, not getting augmented. You know, those kind of things were very, very uh, quite, quite there. But I think uh, one turning point, if you really ask me who's the one hero of uh, Lok Sabha election 2024, I would I would think that Akhilesh Yadav, uh, the the president of Samajwadi Party in UP, he needs to be given a lot of credit because they are the single largest party in UP and they were in alliance with the Congress and uh, and a couple of other smaller parties. But uh, but the fact is, uh, you know, the kind of the way uh, Akhilesh Yadav and Rahul Gandhi uh, campaigned, uh, you know, in UP, very very dis uh, you know in a very very mature manner. Uh, I, I think that has. Uh, made a lot of difference. So I would really feel the most unexpected hero of, uh, you know, of uh, elections, uh, Lok Sabha elections in India in 2024, uh, uh, you know, other than uh, India Alliance and Congress is actually uh, uh, Akhilesh Yadav because yeah. uh, he has done remarkably well. And after BJP and Congress, he's, he, his is the third largest party. Uh, yeah, I do take your point on that, that Akhilesh Yadav really was a star campaigner along with Rahul Gandhi. But, you know, the point that was made earlier was that even in 2019, Akhilesh and Rahul did 
uh, pull the crowds together, but they did not translate into votes. This time it actually did translate into votes. The absence of Mayawati possibly shifted those votes also to the SP Congress, which has not happened in the past. And of course, the you know the UPK Larkon ka slogan, the fact that they went on the Jadav Yadav vote together, all of these played a factor in the success of the SP and the Congress in Uttar Pradesh, certainly denting uh, you know the, the, the dominance of Yogi Adityanath in Uttar Pradesh, Mr. Krishna. No, I, I completely, in 2019, you are right, uh, you know, uh, they, they came together as, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, 2009, uh, 2014, they came together, 2019, yeah, the SP and right. Samajwadi Party were yes, together. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, so so 2014, you know, there were still early days, uh, you know, Congress had ruled this country for 10 years and, uh, you know, they came together. But I I, I thought in 2014, uh, Congress and Samajwadi Party, they, they lacked the strategy to fight elections. This time, the strategy was in place. Even in 2019, the, the BSP and SP, they, they were the arch, uh, arch rivals, uh, arch rivals and... Uh, some people would have thought that they are foes of the highest order. They would never come come together, but they did come together. They campaigned together. You know, people like uh, the late Malayam Singh, uh, Mayawati, and Akhilesh Yadav being on the same platform addressing election rallies that did uh, ring the bell, and they did bag uh, 15 seats. So one is this, and in 2019, you know, people's honeymoon uh, with the BJP was still intact. You know, it, it didn't get over. It, it's not over either. But, uh, you know, the, the traction the BJP had with the electorate surely uh, slowed down uh, this time. And, uh, and and that's the reason the, the kind of results that you see. But this time I saw a lot of strategy and a lot of uh, statesmanship, which uh, both uh, Rahul Gandhi and Akhilesh Yadav uh, showed uh, uh, in UP. And that is the single biggest a factor for uh, BJP's uh, dreams uh, getting shattered. You know. Certainly, Mr. Krishnan. Thanks very much indeed. Appreciate you joining us uh, at the moment and discussing all these issues that have led to this uh, result as far as the elections 2024 are concerned. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.